So I wanted to talk about the recent use of JavaScript in some industries that we might be less familiar with. So by old line, I mean industries that aren't using the World Wide Web um, as part, as essential to their operation on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, Semiconductor is one that immediately comes to mind. Um, aerospace, um, lots of industries in manufacturing, um, biology, uh, pharmaceuticals, um, plastics, um, lots of companies sort of outside of our world of kind of the World Wide Web. So here's one example of a company in the South Bay that does um, genomic sequencing for medical purposes. And I love seeing this job post because I would imagine they'd be hiring like a PLC programmer or a C-sharp programmer or a C++ programmer, but they're hiring an Angular programmer um, to make dashboards, which I think is something that we've only started to see in like the past three or four years. Um, like these, these types of companies weren't really looking for JavaScript programmers three or four years ago. So, like, why is that? Why, why is JavaScript suddenly coming on the scene in these other, you know, these other classes of companies? Um, so I used to work at this solar cell plant, and that's actually where I learned JavaScript. And I was making um, internal websites that, never, that were never seen by the World Wide Web. Um, we, had, we were collecting all this data from the manufacturing line and it was going into a MySQL database, and we had to present all that information to the engineers and the factory workers um, so everyone could easily see what was going on. And I had never done anything like this before, and being, you know, I guess a millennial, the natural, the, the way that seemed most natural to display that information was using a browser. So um, we, we built this sort of dashboarding system using JavaScript and kind of the tools you know, people here are really familiar with. Um, but if people, if people in these industries aren't using um, JavaScript in websites to display this kind of information, you know, what, what are they using? What have people been using um, you know, for the past 50 years in these kinds of like old line manufacturing industries. And one, um, one program that's really common that some of you guys might have heard of, um, if, you had, if you were in grad school or you worked in a lab in college, is LabVIEW. Um, so like a really typical paradigm, believe it or not, um, for, these, for companies where there are labs or manufacturing lines, is you'll have one computer that's like the dashboard computer and if you want to go and check what's going on in the lab, you like put on your bunny suit, you go into the lab, and then you check the dashboard. And you're like, OK, great, everything's OK. And then you go back out, out of the lab and into the office. Um, or you might have some kind of like remote desktop system so that if you're at home, you can check in on the lab computer, um, which, it's, which sounds so ridiculous. Um, when you could just use a browser. Um, but a lot of companies um, still sort of work this way. Um, the, the company that makes LabVIEW is a billion dollar company. Um, just to sort of like show the extent of, of how much these kind of desktop um, dashboard programs are still in use. So, Dashboarding, I think, is, in my mind, kind of um, the entry point, or has been the entry point um, for JavaScript coming onto the scene in some of these more, um, some of these older school industries. Um, and that's, that's really thanks to 
a lot of um, a lot of like the easy and nice plotting tools that are available now, like D3, the Google Charts API, um, Digraphs. It's just really it's really easy to spin up charts in a browser now, and all those tools are free. Um, so versus paying a few thousand dollars for a program like LabVIEW, there's been a lot of kind of recent interest in figuring out how to, um, in sort of scientists that don't have any programming or JavaScript background, to learn enough to be able to make, um, to make dashboards and displays like these. So, um, you know, dashboarding to me is kind of the entry point for these types of industries, but I think there are maybe other future um, uses of JavaScript in these um, sort of scientific and older school engineering industries. And one that I think is really interesting is technical computing. Um, like the, the very early days of technical computing were in C, and then there was Fortran, and then there was MATLAB, and a lot of people use Python now, and now there are people um, working on Julia. And technical computing is, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a branch of programming that's really needed to solve, um, to solve math, math problems that, you know, we can't solve analytically and we need a computer to solve. And there are some people um, that are, you know, starting to do the groundwork for, uh, that would be needed to do technical computing in JavaScript. Um, one person is this fellow, Mikola, um, who's starting to do a lot of sort of basic work and like how, how do we store matrices in JavaScript in an efficient way. It's kind of like a lot of the really fundamental um, work that would be necessary to solve um, these types of problems in JavaScript. Then another you know, potential future JavaScript application in these industries that we don't really see now, but who knows, five, 10 years um, could become commonplace is instrumentation. Um, so there's this company in Berkeley, Tessel, that's making these um, microcontrollers that you can program in JavaScript, which, which is something new and cool. And this is really just um, you know, for, for tinkerers and hobbyists so far. But you know, maybe in the future, this is sort of like a, a typical PLC uh, programmable logic controller display that would control some, some type of machinery in a factory. Um, and they're typically programmed using C Sharp or some kind of graphical programming languages. But you know, maybe in five, 10 years, JavaScript will have changed enough and so many people will know JavaScript that you know, it won't be uncommon that you program um, something like a programmable logic controller in JavaScript. And then um, I work for a company called Plotly, and we really focus on um, sort of this, the scientific plotting part of what JavaScript has to offer to the scientific community in these types of industries. And um, the nice thing that you get out of plotting in JavaScript is there are all these great tools like D3, and you get um, interactivity. So these chart, on these charts, you can hover, and you can zoom, and you can pan around. And if you compare that to MATLAB or LabVIEW or kind of other um, common scientific software right now, um, you don't get that kind of interactivity. So it's, it's hard to imagine um, going back from that. Um, so you know, there are a lot of people in the scientific community that think JavaScript um, is here to stay at least um, for, for visualizing data because of the upsides you get in interactivity. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to mention that Potly has a Node API. Um, so if any of you guys are working on Node projects where you want to plot some data, um, our, our API is on NPM and it's free. 
um, and it supports pretty much any any type of chart. So that's all I wanted to cover. Okay. Thanks.